Good evening. Um, uh, I'm Jakub Mahalik, and I'm a Fulbright visiting scholar at NYU working on philosophy of consciousness. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about my research. Uh, when people hear about consciousness, they often think of uh, intelligence or the ability to think. But what we analytic philosophers typically mean by consciousness is something more basic. Um, something more basic, uh, uh, namely in the words of this guy, philosopher Thomas Nagel, uh, an organism is conscious just in case there's something it's like for this organism to be, uh, for this organism to be this organism, to, to uh, have perceptions, enjoy, pa enjoy pleasures, undergo pains and stuff. So only if there's something it's like, so to say, from the inside for this organism to be itself, uh, the organism is conscious. So for a, for a rabbit, for example, there's presumably something it's like to eat fresh grass as this little body, or sadly, to get kicked, which means that the rabbit is conscious for a piece of rock, on the other hand, there's presumably nothing it's like subjectively to get kicked or thrown around, which means that the rock isn't conscious. The fact that we are conscious, uh, like 16 hours, 16 hours a day or more, looks like an important fact, important fact about ourselves. If there were nothing it's like to be me right now, I'd be as good as dead inside. I'd, I'd be like a zombie, right? I'd, uh, I'd have no perceptions, emo no conscious perceptions, emotions, or anything else. Uh, moreover, consciousness greatly matters for ethics, for uh, this, uh, you know, this teaching about how we ought to behave, how we should behave. So we tend to treat rabbits very differently from rocks because we presume that rabbits, being conscious, can undergo pain, pleasures. Um, and by the way, that's why it matters that the lambda, uh, uh, the, this large language mo model recently developed by Google, the Google company, which made it through the media recently, uh, it matters why it is or isn't conscious, right? Because we would treat it, we would need to treat it differently if it's conscious. While important, consciousness is also deeply puzzling. Um, and plausibly, my consciousness is produced by my brain, but it's totally unclear how, how my brain produces this colorful, qualitative inner movie inside my head. That's my consciousness. So, cognitive science and neuroscience are very, very good at explaining various cognitive capacities or functions, things our brains can do. For example, we understand pretty well the processing that happens in uh, your brain when you notice a puddle of water, and as a result, you avoid it. Explanations of this sort, however, uh, this is just an idea of what cognitive scientists do. They, they analyze the processing in the brain. And exp unfortunately, explanations of this sort, as I see it, they fail to explain the apparent fact that there's something it's like for me to see the puddle as well. I have an experience, a conscious experience of the puddle. Here is me having the puddle, which looks like the sky, but it's, the, it's a puddle nevertheless. The problem is that while scientific explanations focus on functions, it's totally unclear that my visual experience of the puddle can be understood as a function the brain performs. Consciousness seems to go beyond the performance of functions, beyond what the brain does. It appears that these functions could even be performed, so to say, in the dark, without consciousness. That's why uh, consciousness, according to philosopher Dave Chalmers, uh, constitutes the hard problem. Con consciousness is a hard problem, according to Chalmers. And my current project, which 
uh, which actually has Dave Chalmers as its advisor. My project concerns the question of how we know about this puzzling nature of consciousness. I think this question leads, leads us to another notable property of consciousness, namely that conscious states exist for their subject in the sense that these, the subject is aware of them, right? So that the, my experience, my consciousness isn't just there, it's for me. And to have a conscious perception, for example, arguably means to be aware of this perception, in addition to being, aw to being aware of something outside, uh, you know, in the world. If I were completely unaware of this perception, then it would be totally unclear how the perception could be conscious. So consciousness comes with one's awareness of it, which is the basis of our knowledge of consciousness. This makes consciousness very different from most of my other properties, like being six feet tall. I can be six feet tall and not be aware of it at all. So consciousness is special. And I have two more sentences. As I see it, the special awareness of consciousness should be understood as direct and immediate, akin to what philosopher um, Bertrand Russell uh, described as direct, aware, di direct acquaintance. And in my project, I try to achieve a better understanding of this direct awareness or acquaintance to approaching it from the meta perspective by focusing on the things we typically believe or say about this direct awareness of our consciousness. I hope this approach will shed some new light on the fascinating phenomenon that's consciousness. Thank you very much for your attention.